This is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and we have with us this morning Ai Ali, who is a shaman in the African tradition, and tell us more about that. Okay, well, originally, um, of course, I was brought up Judean Christian and conventional and all of those things, but in regards to my own process uh, and working on healing my body, I was definitely open to my work in regards to a shamanic practice. And so a lot of the things that I practice is um, the indigenous healing arts and learning how to incorporate that with a lot of the metaphysical training and understanding that I've had. So it incorporates definitely some of the traditions of great grandmothers and the Cherokee Indians in my family, but also having an understanding of my connection to ancient Egypt. So a lot of it is comedic as well. Wow. Okay. So the, <laughs> so um, are we, we can see your altar there. Can you tell us a little about it? Yes. So one of the things that um, is practiced in regards to the altar work that myself and my husband, we work as a team, in regards to our shamanic practice is we definitely acknowledge our ancestors so on the bottom aspect of it we have our ancestors and then we utilize a radionics uh, technology or the energy of radionics using crystals and connecting from the other side on on the other side to assist us so part of this is um, an aspect of the radionics machine where we put our requests for healing and for things that we want to manifest in our life. And we bring that to the ancestors. A lot of our clients are there too with their, with their intentions. And then um, the middle part is a bunch of crystals, right? You see all <laughs> these crystals. But a lot of that is the way that we communicate to um, our ancestors. And we use the runes and sigils as in other oracular systems, but we also go on the other side to um, to get an understanding from spirit and from our ancestors, you know, as far as how we should move and how to be directed in life. The top aspect of it is more uh, our, our prayers and how we want to put our intentions out there. So a lot of it is sacred geometry. You'll see in the middle, I don't know if you can kind of see in the wall, but we have the Sri Yantra and we have aspects that are designated to what I call my three teachers um, and to uh, the, the, I was about to say comedic, but the um, African Orisha. And yes, it's a lot of stuff, but a lot of it <laughs> is connected with sacred geometry, utilizing crystals mm -hmm. and having the energies, um, creating a portal so that we can communicate to our ancestors and to spirit. And, um, and spirit can be different aspects, of course. We have, of course, our higher self and our ancestors and all of our relatives um, and all the guides that are out there to assist us on various aspects of our lives. And not just this life on this plane, but um, even our, our lives on other dimensions, so to speak, since we're multi-dimensional, so yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. What would you uh, recommend someone who doesn't know anything about their ancestry? What, what would you recommend for them to do? To get well, at the very least, it is really assistive. I mean, it, it really assists um, for us to elevate the energies by remembrance and by love, by celebrating the memory of those that are in our family lineage. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of us, you know, may not know everybody in our family. And what's interesting is once you begin to create a dialogue, there comes these awesome synchronicities and opportunities for you to have more and more understanding of, oh, wow, there's my grandfather. I didn't know that that was, you know, all these interesting things will come to pass. Like I remember um, my grandmother um, did pass or transition and at the time, I really did not know very much in regards to my family on that side. But at her funeral, there was a cousin who was huge into the history of our family. And I literally had a book um, of all of these names of all of our people on our family, on that side of my family from the 18 or 1700s. Wow. So that was 
amazing because I didn't have any names really. I didn't know anything, but now um, because I believe the dialogue was created and I was really just putting prayer and remembrance, um, remembrance to my family on the other side, that opportunity began to open up. And so that is one aspect. I mean, it's very simple. A lot of times in the older families, our uh, older aunts or our grandmothers or whatever would have a wall where everybody's picture would be posted yeah. on the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an aspect of actually um, re respecting your ancestors and having an altar, so to speak, of the of your lineage and yeah. being reminded of that and sending that love there. So that is the quickest, most surefire way to just really elevate those energies. Because what we're working to do is to elevate more earthbound energies of our ancestors. And when it's earthbound, you have issues like diabetes, or alcoholism and other things that will run in the family because those energies ancestrally are still earthbound and are attaching and trying to, um, are attaching itself to us. And so for us to remember the elevated energies of those that came before us and to keep that loving remembrance out there, it assists in those energies and being elevated. Of course, that's the beginning aspect. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's the aspects of the complication that even I have not been initiated to know all of it. Um, I'm still going through a path. I mean, you're constantly going through various levels of initiation when uh -huh. you choose to connect with spirit. But the very first and foremost thing is just to have a remembrance of, of your family lineage and to keep a loving memory of your of the people that came before um the other aspect is of course having a particular table with a white cloth that is there and you you know can light a candle or have a glass of water and, and there's thank god for the age of information yes <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of information out there in regards to how you can go about and remembering it but one surefire way is just to remember you know the people in your family line um, and sending loving memory to them. And then, um, of course, because this is inside, you can always go outside, earth, spend time with Gaia, spend time with the earth, and just with your breath and with your prayer to send out those, those energies of love. And eventually there becomes dialogue. And in the beginning, you may not hear anything, of course. <laughs> yeah. and then, later it does it becomes a dialogue in regards to synchronicities in your life really speaking to you and it'll come about in dreams or other people telling you words of encouragement and things like that okay mm -hmm. all right that sounds interesting so <laughs> just <laughs> just start journeying and ask to meet them maybe yes um of course you the more complicated well i don't even say complicated but um, there are, of course, levels to it. So from a shamanic perspective, you do journey um, to different aspects of yourself. Um, so being that from a shamanic perspective, everything in our reality is a reflection and a projection of yourself, of your highest self, right? Uh -huh. And so in that aspect, um, everything is a relative. Everyone is a relative. Every situation is a connection of some sorts to you. Every situation that you're aware of. So like one person might look at news and they might say, hey, oh, oh my goodness, this thing happened in the street next, you know, right. a couple of streets over from us. And the, the next person would have turned on the news station maybe. And they didn't see that at all. So the common denominator of even being able to be aware of these things is really ourselves. And so this is a very good, um, point to be made in regards to understanding what we are connected mm -hmm. to energetically and how to keep that connection very sacred and to be open and aware of that. Um, but it can happen in a variety of ways. You were talking about journey and you can go into meditation and you can journey. You can utilize drums and sacred music preferably natural, but just music to keep the heartbeat going, to keep the breath going, and to connect to those aspects of ourselves that are everywhere and in everything. 
And this is also an aspect of being um, very connected to your ancestral line. Mind you, everything is a relative of some sort. And so it is a way where you can expand your perspective of being connected to everything and taking it literal, not literal, I like to say, but <laughs> by understanding that everything is really a reflection of you on some level, you know, and gaining the information and the knowledge of yourself um, and how spirit is guiding you through your life. That is what those things are for. But that's the very beginning aspect. Um, there are of course, different rituals that a person does um, and different initiations to um, understand working with the ancestors and working with energies that assist you in working with the ancestral line, not only of you personally, like biologically, like a, what I was speaking of, but also um, in working with our spiritual line because there are families that we have that are biological and then there are families that we have that are spiritual. So, yeah, hopefully okay. I'm making sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. And um, do you have a website that people can go see yes. more about? Okay, what, what is that? Yeah. Okay, it is under my name. My full spiritual name is Ayali Kalibayat L-O-I. But all a person needs to remember is Ayali. Ayali is an acronym that means I am, you are, and love is. Hence the weirdness of the spelling. But it is I-A-Y-A-A-L-I-S. And all you have to do is put that in there or, you know, in the URL area and put .com. So Ayali.com. Did yeah. you see this on the on the chat? Is that right? Uh, I uh, did see something pop up. This is kind of new to me. Is it, can you see it at all? It's a chat in the chat room. Should be click on chat. Ah, okay. Let me go back. Dun, dun, dun. Ah. Okay, no, it's I A. Oh, I can I can tap there to chat and maybe give it myself, right? Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay, yes. I Lee and then and this awesome technology, right? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Colorado and you're in where? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. I've got the last two letters wrong. I had a Y instead of an I. Okay. Yeah, it was close. <laughs> okay, so it's I A Y A A L I S dot com. Okay. And do you work with oh that went out privately. I'm trying to Make it go. Public. Um, okay. Um, okay. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm not, I don't have this. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And do you work with people um, online? Yes, actually I do. So um, I use, uh, I'm definitely an oracle or what the new age industry calls a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. um, so I offer people readings and I use um, everything from energy work or what spirit says needs to come through me to assist the person. And so, yes, I do readings online. I okay. also do it over the telephone. Sometimes people will ask me to help them and offer shamanic healing remotely. So uh -huh. remember I was talking about the altar. Uh -huh. There are people that have requested a particular type of healing. And so we will just put their, um, their requests and their intentions there, whether it's love or money or health or, you know, um, there and ask spirit accordingly and so yes it's done in person obviously we do it in our house but we also 
And sometimes we do retreats and workshops and stuff like that in Nashville. And, um, but we also um, definitely take people online and talk with people. And you're also a traveling shaman? Yes. When we come to Colorado this summer? That would be awesome. I am ex- I would be thrilled. I am thrilled to be able to offer that. That would be amazing. We are thrilled to looking forward to meeting you in person and your husband. (laughs) That's going to be very fun. And you're a member of our group, the shamanicarts.studio. Yes. And people can uh, contact you there also. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for being with us today, and I hope we'll have you, well, we will have you this summer, and I hope we'll have you online again, too. Okay, that would be, yes, it would be awesome, Zarouk, and I would have lots to tell you as well then, too. (laughs) I can't wait. (laughs) 